Berlin's regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Um, with us is uh, Flo Smith, Justin Lawrence, I'm Brad Town. Um, also with us is Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer, Thomas Badowski, uh, 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 Town um, Administrator. And also we have our road foreman, Tim Davis. Okay, so before you got on, Justin, we were just talking about uh, how much gravel and sand we had left over from last year, and I was just I was just trying to get a feel for it as far as um, if we could trim that any. But uh, well, with that being was... said, too, Brad, they bought a thousand yards from Barry Town toward the end of the winter too. So sand or gravel? Sand. Uh, I got gotcha. you. I think it was sometime beginning of March, I believe. They were close to being out, and Barrytown gave the town a good deal on a thousand yards of sand because they have their own pit, so they they put yeah. up way more than they'll ever use. So they they gave the town a good deal on a thousand yards, so we wouldn't run out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where that pile started from. Okay, well, Diane, we want to take and start going over the road. Yep, okay. Do we do we want to review the revenues at all? I mean, I just I you know bumped them up a little bit by five thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. There's really almost no change from year to year. I'm not anticipating any grants. We hope to get them, but I don't know if we're going to. Uh, so we do. Do we want to spend any time reviewing that again, or do we want to just go to the expenditures? Well, let's review it. It's always good to. See where okay. the money comes from. Okay. So um, I was talking, we were talking about um, the railroad levies, highway, summer, winter, the state hospital. I'm thinking on the roads um, that the state, this is for um, the roads that are class two and three. Uh, they've been giving us a little more, a little bit more money. So I have projected that we should probably get another like $1,500 for FY22 in that. The other thing I projected upwards was the town clerk. I do think that she'll uh, have maybe an additional $5,000 because we do have things happening in town. Uh, and I know there's been a lot of sales of houses, people refinancing. So they're getting a lot of information from the vault, even though they're not going into, going into the vault at this point in time, she is giving information to people that they're asking for and looking it up. So I've increased that by 5,000. Um, I brought down the interest earned on the checking and savings account because right now our checking account is paying us 0 0.01 tenth of a percent. And we were getting like 1% at the beginning of the year. So I don't think that we're going to be making, you know, $2,000 or even $1,500. Well, um, I'm, I'm hoping to get $1,500, but I don't know. I think I'm guessing kind of high on that. So um, overall, with those changes right there, we're looking at an increase of $5,850. Otherwise in that, I have left all the other revenues at this, where they were in um, FY21. Does everybody okay. follow you? Everybody have that page? Yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Diane. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the expenditures, do we want to go through the office part of it first? Or do you want highway? Yeah, we haven't or heard that yet. Okay, well, actually, we did. I did present it the last time. Oh, that's right. Um, My mistake. Yeah, I did. But I mean, what I've done is I've put everything together in one page. I want to show you, the, show you the percentages. So I've looked at FY20, FY21, and what I project for FY22. So a lot of them I've tried to bring down how much we spent. Uh, some of them I don't have control over. For instance, we got, um, I did get the bill from Leagues of Cities and Towns. And overall, our uh, premiums are gonna go up 10%. And that's between liability and workers' comp. And obviously that's, we don't, we can't bring that down. I mean, if yeah. we can yeah. have fewer um, losses, obviously in the future, we'll be able to bring it down, but that one is gonna be higher. Also, when we got the ambulance, the ambulance service from Barrytown, is almost, it's over 7% higher than it was from the previous year. So I've had to, you know, put that in there. I haven't heard anything from the town of Northfield for their portion of it, 
uh, but I am assuming that um, you know, they'll probably go up at least 7% as well. So those are the ones that actually did go up. Like I say, I brought down things. Um, for instance, this is an off year on, um, on election year. It's only, we're only gonna have the, um, the town meeting. I don't, we're never anticipating other meetings for right now. Uh, unless unless uh, the school um, vote did, if, if the school budget didn't pass, well, then we'd have to have other meetings. Um, but otherwise than that, I don't think there's any for, um, obviously there's no presidential election and this is not midterm. So that's why I brought that one down. Um, health insurance, I brought up, and the reason I brought that up, well, actually I should go back to the, uh, the pay payrolls. I'm saying a 2% increase, and you know, that's what I'd like to see, I guess. Uh, however, for the town administrator, because we're talking about paying that person 10% more than the previous town administrator, and then adding 2% to that, uh, that one's up 12%. So that is really the, probably the biggest portion of what is up in the office expenses. Uh, is that the ambulance and the uh, insurance as far as health and disability? And not disability, but um, liability. liability. Yeah, liability and workers' comp. So like I said, I brought down, um, I don't anticipate buying another computer this year. So I've reduced that by 2,300. Um, I've reduced the office supplies by 3,000, thinking that maybe we can try to just do more with less. You know, okay. always okay. keep a better eye on what we've got. How much, how much do we have in the line item for new computers? We had $2,300 in the past two years. Right now, I've got it at zero, uh, but we do have a reserve of 15,000. And right now, what we're doing is we're putting more RAM on Tom's computer, my computer, Corinne's, and uh, Rosemary's. So that should give us a little more longevity. The oldest computer I think we have right now is, my, is Tom's and then mine's the next. Uh, but still, I think if we up the RAM, we should be able to go for another year, I'd like to think. Because right now, ours are working, they're all working fine. They're just a little bit slower because they're, they don't have that much RAM capacity. And for like $500, I can increase the RAM of all of those. Yeah. I'm going to do that this yeah. year, so we should be in good shape. Unless, you know, it crashes, which I'm not anticipating. <laughs> so, um, that's that. You never know, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. And as far as the assessors, I'm bringing down some of the expenses that we have in there. Because we don't use much for legal fees. The only time we have legal fees for the assessors is the errors and omissions. And in the seven years I've been here, we've used it once because one person, uh, they didn't, you know, they made, you know, they made errors before, but usually it's nothing legal. And there was one that this was a real tricky one, something nobody run into before. So it cost us $100. But in the last seven years, I think that's all we've spent on legal fees. So I did bring that down to a better, to a more realistic value, which I try to do all through the office. Uh, tax maps. Now I brought that down by $500. Although we've got $2,500 in there for tax maps. It used to be we, we got tax maps every two years. And for like the last four or five years, we get them every year. I, you know, that's one thing, you know, do we need to have them every year? I don't know. Well, you know, but it's like, like that's a $2,500 expense. Yeah. Well, tax maps, I mean, the big thing there, it depends on the, on the amount of sales. Yeah, to and the changes. I agree. Yeah, keep I agree. Up to date. Yeah, but I've got it at $2,500, which is a realistic amount. Okay. When we change it. So if we're not going to do anything else, I think that $2,500 would, would, be, would be okay. And of course, the fees that we have for the assessors that have to do with the state, what they call cap tap fees, uh, which is with the camera program they have, we have no control over that. So I've got that at $1,500, which is what the state you know, bills us every year. Um, so, so the next one, I'm looking at the insurances. Obviously I'm saying the health insurance is gonna be higher and not knowing if the new town administrator is gonna be on single two person or family plan. I put that person on family plan. So I did bring up uh, what we have for expenses in the health insurance, just because right now I'm on single, Dana was on two person and the family plan is quite a lot more than the two person. So I've got myself and then potentially the next person might be on family. So that's why I put that one up. Um, let's see, employee benefits. You know, I've, I've brought that one up 
that I brought the pension. I did bring the pension up a little bit. And the pension is number one for payroll is a little higher. That's going to be higher. But also the pension is going from 6% to 6.25% in FY22. So the match is going to be a little bit higher for the town. And also uh, it's going to increase what uh, we are as the employee are going to pay also. That, that level is also going to increase. So, and like I said, the general insurance, um, I've got that one going up by 5%, the liability, and that's part of that 10% that, um, that we've been charged. I think that the police department and the highway departments are ones that are, that was, uh, the increase was greater for them as far as the liability and the workers' comp. Uh, and then training, um, I brought that down. I think that's in the zoning because we don't use a whole lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I brought that down. Legal fees are brought down in the zoning. Uh, and the DRB, I brought that down way down as far as the minutes. The person that we had doing the minutes before was charging us like $5,000 a year. The person we have now is less than $1,500 a year. So I brought it down to $1,500 a year, which is like a 70% savings. So I brought that down where it's, you know, better. And then Diane, the DRB. Diane, uh -huh. Diane, yeah? just keep in mind that that's, that's really a function of of um, two things. The uh, first is that with our new zoning regulations, uh, some of the stuff the DRB used to have to hear now the zoning administrator does. And, um, okay. but it's also a general um, uh, slowdown in, in major site uh, permitting. So if, if, that, if, if that goes up, you're gonna see a, a higher check up in, in her costs. It could go up, but but also on the other hand, there's revenue that goes along with that. So right. this is almost a moot point because uh, you do if you're going to have more zoning, you're going to make more money. So, um, but it was but I did bring it down to a level that's been more consistent in the last two years. Okay, and then let's see the janitorial services. I'm keeping that up at eighty five hundred dollars. I know we're spending a lot less than that right now. But I'm, I'm just hoping that maybe we, we do an RFP next year and try to get a different service uh, that would just do more cleaning or just do a better job, in my opinion. Um, and then supplies, um, as far as the PPE supplies, I think that we're doing a good job on that. I brought that down uh, by $1,000. The software support, I brought that down to $10,000. It is my intention, you know, when the new year starts and once we're done with the budget and done with the audit completely, that I'm going to start looking at getting a new computer. We really need to upgrade our computer. So if we upgrade our computer, then we should not have all the fees that we have right now because the computer we have right now, it's, it's just not functioning correctly. It's too old. And with a new computer, we should have, you know, we're going to have probably a monthly service, but I don't think it's going to be equal to what we're paying out right now because of all the issues we're having, because it's, it's all the time we've got issues right now. So let's see. That, that's so the thought, server? Yeah, okay. that's the server and yeah. And then uh, maintenance, I brought that down by a couple thousand because I think that, you know, I don't know what we plan on doing for maintenance, but it always seems like we always have too much or we, we don't spend all the money we have in there. Also, I'm saying to retire the vehicle that Dana was driving. Let's not spend any more money on that because that vehicle is old and it's starting to really cost us money. I think, I think it's a 2013, I think. It might be even older than that. But all I'm thinking is if we retire that, we could save a few thousand dollars right there. Well, just put it out to bid to sell it. Yeah. That's my thoughts. I mean, that's not my decision, but I'm just suggesting yeah. that might be a, a good option. Okay, and then let's see. I did bring the equipment crop contracts up by $2,200 because we do have Docstar, which is a program that we save all of our like minutes on and uh, invoices and a lot of other, a lot of information. And this way, we're eliminating some of the space that we need to have in the vault because the vault is full. There's just not putting much more in there. So whatever I take out, I'm trying to put onto this Docstar. But we had to, we had to get the Docstar server a couple of years ago. We have to pay a monthly fee for that. We pay a monthly fee for the software. We pay an annual fee to have the Docstar. 
So I brought up the equipment contracts to the level of what we're actually spending. And also in that equipment contracts, we have our, um, our copiers. And we got two copiers in that. And the police copier. And then legal services, I've left at 15,000. I think that's probably appropriate. The CPA services I brought up by $1,000. Uh, and part of that is the fact that we have a three-year contract with them and that contract is going to go up. In FY22, I know FY21, I'm going to have a single audit. There's no doubt about it. FY22, I might not. But if I do, uh, there's going to be like an extra $1,000. When is that I contract with them up? I think we have one. We, it, I think it ends in FY22. Okay. Because it's a three-year contract. And I think we're in the second year of it right now as we speak right now okay so then um i we've got select board minutes i brought that down now, your daughter is doing an excellent job with those that she doesn't charge us a whole lot so bring it down to where it's realistic and actually it's still i don't think she charges us twelve hundred dollars a year and that's it so when i look at that a lot of the others we didn't change at all but I am looking at an overall increase of 2%. And like I was telling you before, part of that increase is that we're going to be paying our town administrator at least 10% more than the previous one. And our insurance has gone up by 10%. And our health insurance, I'm anticipating going up by 7%. So like I say, overall, I've gotten it to 2% increase based on the information I've given to you. Uh, now, in this also, um, when I look at the wages, I'm basing the wages, uh, with the exception of the town administrator, on a 2% increase. Now, Brad, I, I found out just today that apparently the town clerk and had sent you an email. I didn't get that email. So I just barely, I got it like an hour or two, actually a couple hours ago now, that she'd asked for an increase. I didn't include that in the budget because I didn't know about it. So I did not include that. She sent it out about 215 to the select board. Right, I was just barely reading that letter. Um, so I, I probably, there's no reason, no way you would have had time to put it in there anyway. Um, no, especially because I sent this out to you on Friday, so. <laughs> yeah, um, so we'll, I, mean, I think the board will have to discuss that. Um, what was her, what was the increase? She, I'll read the, you, you didn't get a chance to read that letter. Um, let me see here. Hold on, I'll pull it right up. I read it when I got home tonight, but that would be great if you could read it, Justin. It's a pretty lengthy one, but I'll be happy to. Uh, I've got it here. I've got it here in front of me now. Basically what she's at, what Rosemary requested was that we consider a full-time assistant um, yeah. because we're the only hospital town in the area um, and that the full-time assistant salary uh, be somewhere closer to, let me see, where is it? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. First budget. Uh, we're yeah um with a salary increase to recognize the amount of work the assistant town clerk does that's all she states in there second budget is that our second item um is that she's requesting that we look at um you know barry town salary range of between 55 and 60 and that traditionally speaking the uh town treasurer um, and the clerk salary were the same, I believe is yeah. what it was, somewhere in there. A uh, long time ago. Well, when the, when the town, when the uh, treasurer was part-time. I got you. So the, the, you know, that, yeah, that she references that you know, the, in the previous select board, I've never heard a request from Rosemary, but the previous select board um, had said since the office wasn't open on Fridays that she uh, she obviously wasn't working 40 hours a week. And then she just goes on to, to say how she does. 
Um, well, she, I think the town clerk is here on Friday. It just isn't open for the public. Right. Right. Yeah, she's right. here usually in the morning for a couple hours. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not open to the public, the office. That's what I, I guess. Um, and she said she works one day on the weekend often, sometimes both, um, because there's no disruptions with land records. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, I don't know when we want to discuss that, but I don't think, I don't know if right now is the appropriate time or not. Well, we'll have to have another budget meeting. We'll go over it then. Um, right now, Tim is here. So let's move on to the. Okay. To the highway. Highway. So in highway, um, overall, let me see, it was a 7% increase overall that we had discussed. Um, on the wages, uh, because Tim Jr. is making less than Tim Sr. was, uh, there is a, a lower amount as far as wages go. So, so there's a savings there. Um, I did increase the overtime for summer just because I'm not sure with uh, that culvert, if there's going to be even more work for the for the road crew, I'm assuming there might be more overtime. So I, we built that in, just thinking that might be the case. Uh, and the roadside mowing, we talked about that. We wanted to increase that because we have there's just like a one. They they just they do one pass, and then if you want to talk about that, Tim, you are far more knowledgeable about what we were talking about on that, as far as the second pass and what you wanted to do for rental. Well, it's we can either we can either rent a machine and and for a week and do most of the second passes for ourselves, and um, or try to contract it out for the second pass also. But I'm talking with the other towns around me. They kind of they hire somebody to do one pass and then they rent one to do their second passes and their more aggressive cornering on the inside, outside corners and stuff like that. They go three, four passes. Um, they're almost paying the same amount of money that we're paying for just the one pass, two pass on our blacktop that we're doing now. So I'm hoping this year being the first year that we're gonna try this, that we actually might be able to save some money uh, by doing it this way so it, it's going to be kind of a guinea pig this year but I'm, I'm hoping it's going to work out and then maybe next year we can cut the budget back once we have it established and I can get some groundwork put down to make prices a little closer do we have any idea um, how many hours it takes to do the roadside mowing currently the, the total what we're spending our ten thousand dollars on uh does he bill i didn't see the bill from donnell this year so i don't um, know if he puts hours I don't in think he goes by he hours i i know that six thousand dollars is what we've been paying now just yeah. that one pass um and that's why we're trying to build more into the budget because there are people that were not happy with the passes that no i i got a lot of complaints this year that people were not happy that the roads aren't getting mowed back like they used to that and the brush we've cut a lot of brush this fall um so we're, now if we can just keep that mowed we won't get that brush back we'll keep the trees mowed down but and I, i'll like, look at the bill as well i will go i'll dig out the bill from last year and just see the only, the only reason I was asking is I'm sure you guys are already tapped for time, but I was just wondering if we rented and did the whole thing the way we want it done to, you know, our level of expectation, if that would be a break even or if it well, would cost us more or what. That's where I'm, that's where I'm hoping with doing it this way this year, I can kind of figure that out, Justin, and, and try to get a better game ballpark idea how that's going to work. I know we're talking with the town of Moortown. They pay somebody about 3000 to do a single pass, and then they rent the machine for 
another thirty four hundred dollars. So they're paying six thousand and they're getting what they want out of it. The single pass, you. you know what I mean? The single pass before they go out saves them the time of doing the tedious stuff around the ditches and everything else. They can spend the more time over the rail on the corners and stuff like that. So that's kind of way they get the way they're doing it. Hey, Tim, just keep in mind that what you quoted about Moortown didn't include their labor. It was just the rental. No, labor. yes. But, you know what I mean? One guy for a week on us isn't going to be, you know, a whole, a whole Significant. lot more. Significant. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's opportunity cost. If, if, he's, if he's running the machine, he's not doing something else. Yeah. That's that's the downfall is is you kind of lose an employee for a week, but um, so, so do you feel like you have the time because I see Diane built in the extra added overtime over the summer, so that would just be you know potentially because of the culvert. So my concern would be I don't yeah. want to see you guys get tapped short and have other you know that that's my only concern with it honestly. Other than that, I think it sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I'm trying to think of that culvert. Um, I don't think there's any grants coming. And a lot of times you can take in, uh, or, um, uh, oh, what I the term, uh, where they take in, uh, they'll foot in kind, sir, in kind service, Brad. Yeah. In kind yeah. service is, uh, is where the, where your labor will come in. But I don't think. From what I've heard, we have, we're not getting any grants or even uh, even um, uh, offers of help, are we? I, I, to be honest with you, I don't think that the the town highway crew will be much involved in the culvert replacement. Uh, yeah. I think you're you're going to bid that out to a, a contractor, and and they should they should do the those those, those work assignments. So. Um, yeah. Um, I, I know Tim and I talked about the the, the mowing, and it seemed like a, a good plan that 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 he uh, he tries this half um, a second pass this year and see how it goes and makes an evaluation. Um, I think that sounds great. Yeah. I think the next thing um, that we can go on to is the asphalt marking and sealing. Um, I think we left that 150,000 and Tim, was that like, I don't remember what, what project that was that we were talking about. Um, was it Scott Hill Road or something? Or? Well, that's just, yeah, we, you know what I mean? Without a grant, you know what I mean? Right. We try to pave, we try to pave some of the roads every year. Mm -hmm. um, that was the one that came to mind last year. It had to get mm -hmm. closed in the springtime because it became so like, potholy mogul um so um if it if it does it again i'm gonna see if there's some sort of remedy if we can reclaim it and get a better base underneath the asphalt and try to fix that or we have a bunch of side streets that are starting to get show you know where potholes and asphalt's coming up in some spots. Um, and if it'd be nice if we could get some grants because the junction road um, was brought up to um, for hopeful grants because that's from one town to another town. So usually that's um, easier to qualify for grants for paving that stuff down there. Are you are you talking Junction Road or are you talking uh, Dog River? No, Junction Road from the pretty much the town lines on the bridge there right before yeah. you get to Capital Steel, and and then it goes out. We took a little bit of it up on the end right just before you get to Correns this year because it was in such bad shape. Yeah, uh, eliminated like a hundred feet of it there, trying to get back to the good asphalt. Um, and then with the with the tractor trailer trucks that pull out of the gas station, that road's starting to get some pretty bad wheel tracks in it. And then um, 
I had spoke with Tom earlier in the year. Somebody had made some complaints about Ireland um, and starting to break up where they're pulling out onto the asphalt from the concrete plant. So hopefully the grants come back and we can probably qualify for one for that because it's from one town to another town. So it's a little easier. They're more receptive to give grants for that stuff. And, and Tim, I know Ireland's going to be coming in for a, for a zoning application. I have discussed with them uh, repairs to that road. So what, yeah. when they do come in, you and I need to sit down with them. And then on the resurface gravel, we did increase that by 10,000. And if you can let them know why, Tim. Starting to get a lot of roads that are losing the top layer of gravel. When we grade, we're getting a lot of rocks, like big rocks, four or five inch rocks, um, ledge sticking up. I got, there's a bunch of spots now that are getting ledge. And unfortunately, the only way to get rid of them is to cover them with gravel versus so we're gonna and there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be resurfaced so that's kind of where that's gonna go i'm expecting to use pretty much everything that we got come springtime we had i assume that i assume that if we had better gravel or better surface it would mean easier or less maintenance too right what was that justin Sorry, I would assume that if we had better road surfaces, like as far as better quality gravel, it would it would turn into maybe a little bit less maintenance or a little easier maintenance on our equipment, something along those lines, right? Yeah, the you know what I mean the material we're using is probably some of the best you can get around central Vermont for sure, without having to go way away. And um, it does it seems you know what I mean it's granite, so it holds up pretty good on the on for surfaces the only problem that we find is it gets a little choppy in the hills but that's just i think anything's going to do that but it does help you know what i mean with a good road base and everything else the roads stay drier you don't get as much mud so it's just building into the infrastructure and then the Have next you... thing that have, have you looked at uh, getting rid of some of the canopy, the trees? Um, not too, too much. I know it's starting to catch on quite a bit with finding somebody to go in and with a tree shear in the wintertime and take down the bigger trees. Um, I, I feel sometimes there's a good to bad to that is let it lets a lot more sunlight in in the summertime with dry the roads out and then they get dusty and then we have to use more chlor chloride um you know what i mean i don't believe that we're really that bad off for mud um you know what i mean it's just sometimes with with like that taking taking the canopy out you let a lot more sunlight in which dries the road out and then you get dust and then you of course then you're losing you know, I mean, they they claim you'll lose almost an inch of road road a year between plowing, grading, dust, and everything else. So lose, it's nice we'll, sometimes with the canopy, it keeps the roads a little bit cooler. Yeah, we'll lose some overtime uh, expense as well without trees coming down in the middle of the road on the heavy snowstorms as well, wouldn't we? Yeah, well, like I said earlier there, we've been cutting a lot of brush. Um, and getting a lot of like the guys have made mention all oh, these trees come down when we have a lot of snow on them so we've done a lot of that this fall just trying to be a little bit more proactive and we've not had that much snow so but it's definitely something we can look into as far as there's probably some areas that can definitely be cut back a little bit well of course <clears throat> i mean there's the the practical side of that then there's the uh the aesthetic side too a lot of people don't want to take and see the canopy over the road it would it would help in the fall there wouldn't be so many leaves on the road and in the yeah. ditches but sometimes like i said it's it's hard 
with you know, I mean getting a lot of sun on the road, it'll dry it out too. Tim, Tim yes, and that's why uh, you're requesting seventy five hundred dollars for that leaf blowing machine to get the leaves out of the ditches. Leaves but every yeah, them. everywhere's um, yeah. you know, I mean pine needles like Crosstown gets real bad on the top from pretty much the blacktop all the way to Rowell Hill. The pine needles get so bad over there when those trees let go. Once you get that stuff in the dirt, it doesn't come back out. And then when it doesn't pack, you get like potholes, you get potholes and ripples in the dirt from the pine needles and stuff. So that's, you know what I mean? That's again, what, what we're hoping with that leaf blower. And then Have you, has any of the other towns started using uh, the blowers or? Yeah. Um, town of Northfield just purchased one. Town of Roxbury has one. Uh, there's a few other towns in the area that have gone with them. Um, the salesman that I spoke to about them said the town of Burke had bought one earlier in the year, springtime-ish. And they said that they've saved the same amount of money and storm damages, you know what I mean, as it was to purchase it. Just they can keep the ditches clear. Yeah. What was that, tow behind the pickup? What's that? Tow behind the pickup? You can get two different kinds. Uh, Northfield and Roxbury both bought three-point hitches because they have roadside mowing tractors themselves. Yeah. Um, so we don't have a tractor. So we can buy a tow behind that goes behind the truck with a, with its own motor. Yeah. More expensive though. A little bit. <clears throat> okay. So the next thing we we'd ask for is more money for road signs. We asked for additional um, thousand dollars from four to five. So it was what we'd like. So if you can explain that one, Tim, as far as having more road signs. Well, the more of that is, is just the signs that we use when we work, the road work ahead, flagger signs. Some of them are pretty worn out. Um, it's just nice up upgrade some of them. And like I, when we had to close the road for Fisher Road, um, we had no road close signs that are the pop-up orange ones. I had to borrow some. And... It'd be nice to get a couple of those because when we do change a culvert, we can put those up and then instead of having saw horses and screwing the, I think they're like two and a half by three and a half feet plywood signs that we have for road closures. So that's just, just some upgrading to the sign work that we need. Then the next expenditure that we had that increased is the health insurance. Uh, right now with the four people that we have um, in the highway, three of them are on family plan and one's on a single plan. And last year we had one on a single plan, one was not on it at all. And <clears throat> excuse me, two on family plan. So that is why there's such a big increase as far as the health insurance. We have more people on the family plan. Um, Otherwise than that, we were asking for another $2,000 in supplies. We wanted to go to $8,000. And Tim, you were talking about, I think, had to, had to do with a shop. Just make, like tools, materials you needed for supplies. Yeah, hand tools, wrenches, ratchets, sockets. Uh, a lot of that stuff's been there. We got a drawer full of sockets that have no writing left on them. You can't even tell what they are. And the inside of the sockets have been used so many times that they're loose on the bolts. Uh, we were working on a truck today and two of the half inch ratchets don't even work anymore. The, the selector for tightening and loosening is, they keep popping every time you try to put any torque on them. So um, just try to upgrade some of the hand tools so we can do some of the maintenance that we can do without having a mechanic go out to a mechanic. Um, one of them, uh, the other one, another one that we had was the training of the highway. 
Um, we have a $4,500 increase for that to 5,000. Uh, do you still feel to that is, is that adequate or too much or not enough? Or what are your thoughts on that? Because we do have um, the laptops now that are available. Yeah. And I, I think we can cut that back by quite a bit, at least this year and see how it goes. I've already, I've been in contact with the training facility that used to be Vermont local roads. Now it's involved with the state. So it's all one, one entity. So a lot of those classes will be free. If not free, I think they're like 20 bucks, maybe at the most per employee. And then right now they're doing some stuff online, but with COVID and everything else, they're not doing any hands-on classes. So that's kind of come to a slow right now. But, you know, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the classes that we will need to take are through the through Vermont local roads, the V uh, V trains class work there. So don't I don't foresee us needing all that amount of money. Okay. So what would you like me to bring that down to? I think if we could just do a thousand for this year and and you know what I mean five hundred's been efficient for the years past. I don't mm -hmm. You know I mean, and then with COVID and everything else, I don't really think we're going to get a lot of opportunities to do much of anything. So I think we can cut some there. Uh, the other thing that we increased uh, was the uh, garage energy improvements. We've asked for an additional 5,000. If you can explain that one. Um, it would be nice for that to start doing some energy improvements in the garage, just as far as trying to, like all the garage doors need to be recased. Um, some of the sidings got holes in it from being hit over the years, trying to clean the ice off the side of the building. Um, the roof. I would like to see the roof get re-insulated. I think we can save a lot in just re-insulating the building probably and in, in heating costs. Um, so that's kind of where that is to start sprucing it up a little bit, you know, re-insulating the building, re-casing out the doors, maybe fixing some of the siding with the holes on it. And then the last thing that we have brought up was the uniforms, uh, because we are we've had seventy five hundred dollars for the budget for the last two years. We've been spending over ten thousand dollars for uniforms, and I know we have a contract with um, Cintas. I think that's the name of it. Yeah, and, I think you know, it's not like we're getting anything extra for uniforms. It's just the regular uniforms. We just have not been setting aside enough money um, for the actual expenditure. So I guess overall, uh, that's why it's a 7% increase that we've been asking. I will bring down the level of the training down to 1,000, but still, it's still, you know, still going to be about 7% increase. So I don't, I don't know how this usually works. Um, I, I'm not hearing a whole lot from anyone else on the select board, so I'll just come out and say, you know, the Social Security Administration has given a 1.3% increase this year to social people on Social Security. So for a town to go up, you know, seven to 10% is unacceptable in my, in my book. Those people have to figure out how to pay taxes, pay their fuel. Um, there's a lot of things that are nice to have on there and just, you know, other towns may have, but we're a third of the size in some cases from a population standpoint. And I think we need to do a better job overall as a select board uh, being a little bit more financially sensitive to our taxpayers. John, I agree. Um, so when, one of the big things with the uh, town highway budget that I see is just the healthcare, which appears to be a little bit outside of our control. 
So yep. I don't know how we would go about doing something like that. No, I, I think you're right. I think there's costs that are out of our control completely. Um, and, you know, that we need to continue like health insurance. And then there's things that we can, you know, put off or wait till better times. Things like, you know, leaf blowers and uh, things like that, where, you know, it, it, it would be a nice to have. And it probably would save us some time. But does it actually save us any money, any documented dollars? And where do those dollars come out of? Uh, $7,500 is a hell of a lot of overtime. I understand what you're saying there. That makes sense from that perspective as well. So do you want yep. me to bring down the level of overtime then? Uh, no, no. I'm just, I'm, I'm making the comment that we have to, we have to do something. We can't just leave it at 7%. Mm -hmm. um, right. I, I don't know what point in Berlin's process that the select board takes that on. Uh, but I'd like to make sure that, you know, the department heads involved. So we have full understanding of what we're doing as we go through. You know, there's mm -hmm. things that Tim would like on there. That's what I'm hearing. And then there's things that Tim feels like he really needs, right? Tim, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. And I just want to get to the things that we really need. Yeah, but so like the leaf blower and stuff, that was just a suggestion that was brought up. That's not, I don't believe in here. It was brought to my attention that we had some sort of surplus. So it's not like we need it. And you know what I mean? They've, it's been done for years and years and years without it. Got it. I just, okay. I just know that everybody's starting to pick that trend up and I'm being told, you know what I mean? Town of Burke said that they saved the same amount of money in storm damage, gravel, overtime, equipment hours, as it was to purchase the piece of equipment. So the, just where I'm going with that is it's, it's not something that I need. You know what I mean? We've done it for years and years and years without it it's right. kind of a it would be a convenient thing to have but then again it's not going to be the end of the world to not have it and like yeah. you said you know what i mean if it's not physically responsible to purchase something like that this year it's well, uh, yeah it's i just think it's understandable I, and and that's you know what i mean we can make it work without it it's not going to stop the process that's for sure right. but did we even put the leaf blower in no, I don't budget. believe it's in there. Yeah, I thought it was just going to be like we had some reserves and maybe use some of the highway reserves for it at some point. I so, thought that was what we had talked about. So it was yeah. in the first version of the budget that we looked was at. Okay. We went over it. I mean, as far that's how the seventy five hundred dollar number sticking in my head. Uh, oh, we, okay. well, we definitely got brought up. I don't believe it was in there though. The other thing to remember also, Tim, is that uh, Burke's roads are a little different than ours. Oh, yes. No, by all means. A lot steeper. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, you know what I mean? They're really the only one that's came out and said, yeah, it's a, it's a world saver. Um, yeah. Town of Roxbury bought theirs earlier this year, and the town of Northfield just bought theirs, I think, at the end of October. And, and they got theirs on a grant, from what I was yeah. told. Uh, I don't know where, you know what I mean, where the grant came from or how that all came about, but I was told that they purchased theirs on a grant. That's how they got theirs. I don't know what grant it was, but that's that's how they got theirs. Me, me personally, I'd rather watch Northfield and Roxbury for a year or two and see how much they really like it after using it for a year or two, and that way we have a better use case of neighbors that have them and maybe yeah. and neighbors. i'm sure i'm sure if i went to either one of them and asked us asked to borrow it or or at least go and watch it work and then get some feedback on it you know what i mean for next year or even two right. years from now or or wherever we have the opportunity to purchase it we'll at least have the information right maybe there's an opportunity yeah. to you know make a trade with them, you know, for something that we have, or even, you know, borrow it for a day to see how it works or something like that. Like you said. Yeah. The other thing in the budget that I, I, I mean, I think it makes sense to some degree, but on another level, it doesn't is the energy improvement piece to the okay. building. I, I can see where we could potentially save, you know, whatever money we invest in that building, but at the same time, 
do what what is our plan with that building how long well, are we going to have it what is our energy plan for that building what are, what are we going to do so i i would hate to budget money aside that we're just going to end up spending for the sake of spending that we well we don't. i asked i asked that well you know what i mean i kind of asked that question the last time you know what i mean i don't know what the longevity plan is for that building you know what i mean five years from now the town could be like well we're gonna flatten it and put up a whole different structure or i you know what i mean i i understand and i totally understand what you're saying justin i wouldn't want to put a whole ton of money into a building and then four or five years from now the town plan changes and we end up tearing that building down or doing something totally different um it makes me wonder if, you know, through uh, Energy Vermont or Efficiency Vermont, if they have anything for municipalities out there. I mean, the whole point of the program is is to stop using as, as much fossil fuels, right? So there may be something out there, especially if it's a there's major heat loss going on, where, they, where they'll pay for 80% of something like that. Well, I'm trying to think. Uh... Tim Senior, he did uh, he did some energy upgrades to that building. They they put brand new heat in it last year, and then they put uh, three brand new garage doors on the back of the building. Um, just off the top of my head that I know of, but they well, never changed like, a lot of the lighting too. A oh lot yeah. of the lighting's been all, changed. They did all brand new LED lights in there. Yeah, and that was through energy efficient energy efficiency or whatever they call themselves. Yeah. Well, it certainly wouldn't hurt to look and see what they got to say for themselves. I mean, they can come up and do an energy audit for you too. They can see where you're getting heat loss. Yeah. Well, I can, I can point them in a few spots right now because you can see outside in a few of them. Not yeah. totally, but yeah. you know, I mean, there's one of the doors. You know, what I mean, years ago, somebody caught it with a wing going out, and you know, what I mean, it just. Yeah. It got fixed, but it's not right fixed like it was when it was new. You know what I mean? They yeah. they nailed the board back up on there, and now all the boards are starting to weather and rot. And yeah, first the other problem is those little plastic or rubber strips they use to seal the door. They wear out. Yeah, get caught, curl up. Diane, when uh, Efficiency Vermont came and helped us with the LED lights, did we get a discount on the lights when we bought them? through that correct program. we did a lot of them are like half price right if even so, if not even more what i did is i paid the whole thing and then i got a rebate yeah and that happened for quite a few years in a row and was always with the highway so we, we did quite a lot with that okay good to know <laughs> that's great so you know what i mean in that aspect i i'm not you know what I mean? I don't know what the building plan is. And I don't, I'm not sure if anybody has ever like, oh, this building's going to last us for the next 20 years or anything like that prior to me. You know what I mean? I don't know if that was ever brought up in the past. Um, not really, but as long as the posts are good, we're good to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I think it's all like main frame of the building is steel and then it's wood in between everything. So yeah. the roof will stay up. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing of it is, is that some point in time, uh, you need to take a look at those steel posts where they're next to the ground, make sure they're not rusting away. Yeah. That's going to entail, you know what I mean? It's all plywood on the inside and it's all metal sheathing on the outside. Yeah. So. I'm sure, you know, I mean, there is a hole in the side of the building where somebody caught it years ago with a plow or loader or something. And, you know, the insulation's all weathered and black. And yeah, it's, that's not good. It's stuff like that that I'd kind of like to, you know, what I mean, we could eventually just kind of work toward that. But I totally understand, you know, what I mean, we don't want to go putting a bunch of money into a building and then end up changing the town plan in the next five to 10 years and, and have wasted all that money because that's not, that's not good either. Um, so, 
you know what I mean? If we had to, we could we could cut that back to where it was for the for this year. Um, and hopefully I can use what's there to to maybe recase the doors and try to seal them up a little better there and save us some heat loss. And then we can look at um, get energy efficiency in there and and do like a building audit or whatever to yeah. see what they say. Does that sound good with you guys or? Sounds like a plan. Yep. Agreed. Yes, thank you. Any, what else on this, Diane? Okay, well, we could do the police, but right now I think we're getting into the seven o'clock hour. So should yep. we try to plan for another meeting? I think so. Okay, good. And that way we could do the police and then whatever the next step is going to be as far as, you know, well, we'll have to uh, the next step be yeah, the next step would be finalizing the budget. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. You guys, thank you. Welcome. Thanks, yeah. Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much, Tim. You're welcome. Have a good Thanks, evening. Sir. You too. Okay, it's seven o'clock somewhere. Uh, seven o four. Uh, I'll call the the. Um, for the continuation of the select board meeting that we just did for bu budget prep with the additions of, um, of uh, John Quinn is now with us. Um, let's see here. Uh, any public comment? Hearing none, treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. For some reason, I've lost my picture. I don't seem to have a lot of, I don't have a very good connection right now. But at any rate, um, we have a contractor's application payment for Duke Bois Construction. I've sent you the paperwork uh, and I'd like to get the approval. This is for uh, payment number six. This is a Payne Turnpike South North extension, sewer extension project. And the amount of this invoice is 161,596.30. And I did send it out to everybody. I think it might have been either Friday or today. And I will need you to sign off on it once it's approved, Fred. Okay. And it has been approved, approved by the contractor, the uh, engineer, and the USDA. Uh, well, before you go any further, let's have a motion on that so we can keep up to caught up on this stuff. Uh, a motion to take and uh, for me to sign on the promissory note for 161 thousand five hundred and ninety six dollars and thirty cents brad it's not a promissory note uh, uh the bill i guess it is payment yeah contract payment sorry about that a motion yeah i'll make the motion for conversation purposes at least here a second second okay john uh, I, I'm just wondering who checked the work. Uh, the our engineer checks the work, and Robert's on the call here now. The uh, I checked the work, USDA checked the work, and uh, we meet. We met with the contractor and dis to discuss what was on it. Right. So from the town, Tom, you're you checked the work, or you, you you're in agreement that the work was done to the standard that we wanted after That's consulting the. USDA and the engineer. That's correct. Okay. It's the only <laughs> question that I had. Any other comments on this? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Okay, Diane. Okay, that's it for that one. I, I think I have some else coming right up too. Diane, you had a greater. Yeah, the greater. greater? Yes. Okay. And I've sent that paperwork I just received today. And I've sent that paperwork to all of you. Um, this is for the 10 year loan that we're going to be having with our community bank NA. Uh, and it's at 2.05% interest, which was agreed to in May. Uh, the $247,900 for the greater is the exact amount that we were quoted. 
uh, by Caterpillar. Uh, so I do need to have a signature on that. And then once it's approved, to get approval and signature, I will be sending it um, to the other board members for their signatures as well. There's three different places to sign on the form. Okay, motion on that. So moved. And a second. Second. Any other discussion on that? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, Diane. Okay. Diane, the draft audit report. Oh, draft audit report. I'm sorry, I'm just reading my form now. Okay. So I have sent the audit report to you and it's obviously very long. So what I did is there's like three or four pages I sent to you that I just wanted to really uh, talk about some of the highlights of this. Uh, actually, at our next meeting, I am going to ask our auditor to attend the next meeting and go through the audit report as she does every year. And then I'll ask for the board to approve it. But the first page um, that I've sent has to do with, um, if you look towards the middle of it, it says management has determined that the effects of uncorrected misstatements are immaterial. So that means if it was material, that would be something that would be significant. But there was like, I think there was three correcting entries that they made for me and they considered them immaterial. So I wanted to point that out to you because that's always an important piece of the audit to make certain that my work is as accurate as can be. So I do want to point that out to you. Now, the next page has to do with the management. It says management discussion and analysis. So our fund balance increased by $366,707 for FY20, which is significant. Part of that increase was we got $150,000 loan for a piece of equipment that we bought. Uh, also, we got some grants that we, we were not anticipating, and we did not spend as much. In March, even though um, some of our budget went over budget a little bit in the police and in the highway, in March, with, with COVID began, we said we're not going to be spending as much. We're going to try to, you know, just deal with, get up what we absolutely needed to get. And so we obviously, we, you know, we did very well because it, we, you know, we have a surplus of 366,707, which is significant. The year before, we had a surplus of like 200 and some thousand. Then the last page of this that I gave to you on that three pager, if you look down where it says unassigned, our unassigned um, balance right now is 931,530. Last year, it was 700 and some thousand. Let me just tell you exactly what it was from last year. Last year it was 603,700. So we have obviously because of the surplus that we have this year, um, we've increased that. But out of that 931,530, which is something that we can use to buy down uh, the tax rate, 150,000 of that actually we pledged to FY 2021, the year we're in right now. And that's not gonna show until another year. So, so we have something, so it's gonna be 150,000 less than 931, but that's still a significant amount of money. And I did wanna point that out. And like I say, at the next meeting, when um, I have the auditor here, she'll talk more about, more about this as well, but I did wanna point that out to you. I had a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. On any of these fund balances that we have, um, you know, like the, there was a restricted fund balance, which can be used mm -hmm. for records and all that recreation, uh, restoration. Is there yeah. any way we can use that fund balance to cover any of those server expenses as well as maybe digitize more of our records to make things more efficient for the clerks? No, um, no, because what we have, um, we have our own reserves and some of them that are not restricted. Some of them that are like unassigned, we could reassign those for something else. But the restricted ones are ones that either were voted on, for instance, the one that was voted on would have been the bond, that when, when we had the bond, we, get, we got a bond loan, that can only be used for building. 
uh, or if, um, or for instance, what we have for uh, like listers, there's like a very small amount there. You can't spend that because um, that's by statute. You can't spend that. So um, the unassigned, the 931, 530 is what we can spend if we wanted to. It has nothing, there's none that restricted in there. But that can only be used to buy down the tax rate. It can only be used to buy down the tax rate. Correct. You can't, like, you can't say, I want to buy a grader with that. You can't do that. Right, the, but you can build a grader into your budget and then use that to buy down the tax correct. rate. Correct. Yeah, and this is kind of, kind of what we've been doing. So actually, with the budget we have now, uh, that we're, we're working on now, we could potentially use some of this. I mean, if the select board chooses, we could potentially use some of that to buy down the rate. Like we did last year. We used 150000 last year. Uh, like I say, in that 931, we do need to, to subtract the 150 because we're always like, you know, two years behind in the audit. But we, but we can't use it to set up capital improvement funds or capital equipment funds. Correct. We cannot. So what you could do is you could say, okay, I want in the capital expenditures, I want to put in $300,000 in the capital expenditures. And then, you, so you build that in there and then you turn around and then you say, okay, I'm going to take six cents off the the tax rate through the unassigned. That you can do. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Right. So, so could we hypothetically pay off, say, a dump truck, you know, with an annual payment of fifteen thousand dollars a year? Shift that fifteen thousand dollars a year to a uh, capital equipment fund. So we'd be paying off, so we'd be paying down our tax rate and at the same time taking the line item that was going towards paying off the debt and moving it to, moving that annual cost to a equipment fund. Capital expenditure, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so in other words, instead, let's say you're gonna pay an extra 15 uh, and your payment's 15, you could say we're going to pay $30,000 on that in the capital expenditure, show it that way, and you can do that. So why hasn't the board done it in the past to eliminate some of this interest expense that we incur? That, that I can't answer, Justin. You know, that wasn't brought up. Um, you know, we've been trying to, or I've been trying to, you know, have some more reserves built up. That just didn't happen. Brad, can you speak to that? The um, the uh, the monies there, the unreserved, we always kept as a as a rainy day fund, and we thought it was more it was important enough to have money in that fund to have in case of a of a bind than. Uh, than to take and uh, pay down the debt. But if I if I understand correctly, now we're in a position where we have our rainy day fund where we want it yeah. from a percentage standpoint, right? Yeah. Okay. And so, in the past, we've always used some of that money. Basically, I'm trying to think how does this? It's the people's money, and by by paying into the to the tax rate, you're you're redistributing back to the to the uh, taxpayer. That's a great way of explaining it, Brad. And I mean, Diane has always wanted to take and keep at least oh five hundred thousand. That's my comfort level. Yeah, that's yeah. my comfort level. I didn't got quite so much though. Yeah. But uh, we certainly can take some of that and, and, and uh, once we finalize the budget, you take, once you finalize your budget, you can take that money and, and, uh, and put it toward the tax rate basically is what you're doing. So you're basically buying down your tax rate a little bit. Yeah, I understand what that concept is, but I, like for me, the way my mind works around finances, I'd almost rather look at how to 
I mean, I instead of buying it down later, I I just I think that if we can eliminate debt, sometimes that's that's a great way to go about it. And then if we're putting money aside for capital, eventually we're going to end up putting the town and the taxpayers in a more stable and and uh, they're just going to be in a better position from a tax standpoint. So I'd like to, as a board, start working towards eliminating some of the debt if possible as well. well and I think it helps our bond rating as well if we are if we don't have as much debt, Justin, right? So. And then as far as reserves, um, what is the turn? Or like, uh, this, let me ask this question. Uh, so we just bought a brand new dump truck, for example. We have a pretty significant loan on that. Um, if we were to pay that dump truck off, is there a process and what would that timeline look like if we were to all of a sudden need some rainy day money and needed to maybe refinance that dump truck, for example? Okay, um, if we were to pay it off, obviously that comes out of cash. And then at the end of the year, instead of having, um, you, you would have a loss potentially. And that's where that would eat at that uh, unassigned monies. Does that does that make sense to you, what I just said? Sort of, but I don't think, maybe I need to re-explain the question. My question mm -hmm. was just simply this. You want $500,000 as a, uh, just for your comfort level, which I understand, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Mm -hmm. um, if we paid off one of our, say, newer dump trucks, and then we needed to recoup 150,000 and the truck was worth 150,000. Is it possible for us to just go to the bank and refinance that dump truck? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, now I get what you're saying. Yeah, we could. So instead of paying 6% interest or whatever, or well, 2%, well, I think. 2%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead of paying that interest rate, which is an expense to the taxpayers, that's an easy way to help reduce some of the cost. That's all I'm thinking. Well, again, it'll be at the end of the uh, at the end of the budget cycle is when you would do that. So, is this question better moved just to your next budgeting meeting to get dig go oh, digger deeper in depth? Yes, on it? yes. I mean, there's yeah. no point in discussing. Yeah, because anything. you you finalize your you finalize your budget, then you have a solid number you're looking at. You can estimate what the what your uh, your, uh, does to the tax rate and then you can take and some of that monies you can buy down the tax rate that returns money back to the taxpayer right but if you don't build into the budget that you're going to pay off a piece of equipment you can't you can't take those unrestricted funds and then put them into the budget i don't believe no right so it would it would be a prior to buying down at that point conversation, but it's definitely something I want to talk about at our next budget meeting. Yeah. Is that it, Diane? Yep, that's it. Okay, thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Um, and you did the draft audit report. Yep. We're, we're 710, Brad. Yep. Uh, Chief, what's up? About this. Thanks. Can't hear you. How about now? That's better. I'm trying to use it. Your phone. Um, I talked to Tom a little bit about this last week. Um, since COVID came into play, a lot of first responders have been um, discussing hazard pay um, because we are on the front lines and exposed to COVID in a little bit more personal way. Um, the state police are receiving an additional bonus, I guess, to their regular paycheck uh, in the form of hazard pay. 
and a lot of municipalities are going that way. I just learned today that Barry Town has a significant um, addition to their pay um, related to, ha to COVID. So just recently, within the last month or so, I was approached by members of the police department expressing their interest in getting some kind of compensation um, because of their employees during COVID. As you know, we are kind of in a hot spot here in Washington County uh, with the hospital here, um, the hotel. Uh, we're a little bit more at risk of COVID than some of our neighbors. Um, I don't know if Tom shared with you a letter that was that I drafted. Uh, I did, on. James. James, it went out to everyone. So you kind of got the gist of where we're coming from. So uh, that James, what was the uh, what was uh, what was the amount that the that Barry Town was uh, uh, giving their officers? My understanding is two fifty an hour more. I've seen as little as, and there's been some legal action in the federal government by federal employees saying they should there's stipulations in government regulations um, allowing for hazard pay when people are exposed to hazards like chemical and biological hazards so the argument has been posed in in the court that COVID is one of those biological hazards so people lines and exposed to that should be getting hazard pay um, so I think at the federal government level it's low as 5%, um, but around the state police are about a dollar or so an hour. And like I said, Barry Town is at 250, 254 an hour. Uh, is there, in your budget, is there, is there any monies for that? Yes, certainly, no. My understanding is there was an opportunity earlier uh, at the outset of COVID uh, for municipalities to apply for this uh, essential worker kind of compensation. I know Ferry City passed on that for some reason. I assume Berlin probably didn't put in for it. Um, so it's certainly not money within our budget to for that kind of compensation. And there's no way for us to retroactively or just moving forward, see if there's anything we can do to assist? That I don't know. Um, as far as federal compensation, I'm not sure. Um, I'm kind of on the fence here as a first responder and certainly as having recently on the road, I understand where people are from. But I also, now that I'm a department head, I get that where are you going to get Justin, I think the answer. Justin, I think the answer your question that I know the the uh, the feds are looking at a, a second a CARES Act bill, and uh, as of yesterday, they they have stripped out any um, additional funding to municipalities, and and that's where that that first dollars that Chief was talking about in in, in March came from. And then that, that, so the state wouldn't have gotten an allocation of those funds or anything where we could apply. I, I, the, I, they, the state on the first CARES fund did. Um, I believe all those CARE funds are, are exhausted by the end of 2020. And the, the federal government is looking at a second uh, stimulus package. But my understanding, it does not include aid to municipalities. Thank you, Tom. So it comes down to where we find the money. Um, or, or 
I mean, do you do it? And if, I mean, that's the first question, are you, are you gonna do it? And then the second question is, is where you're gonna find the money. Um, yeah. When did we, I'm trying to pull up my emails now. When did, was the email sent with the, that in, the information for this in there? <clears throat> By Friday, when the whole package went out Friday. Friday the 18th at 11.30 a.m. Yeah, sorry, I missed it when I downloaded everything. The, uh, so there's no new round of this um, CARES Act till next year, which is coming right up. Uh, there's nothing in there for the first responders, as I understand it, Tom. There's, for, there's for municipalities, in, for any municipality, so. So that's correct. It, that that would include first responders. Yeah. Chief, what other you said Barry Towns doing this? Is every is it pretty much every police department doing something with this? Or is it just kind of I mean, can you explain that a little more? Yeah, I think it's some municipalities had a foresight, and I'm not trying to dig the town here, had the foresight to apply for the funds, and so there was some monies there for that. Um, other municipalities are trying to catch up. I don't know where Barry Town got their money. That's a significant bump. Uh, Montpelier is in the process of exploring their options for this. Um, the state police probably got it when the state applied for the initial funds, I imagine. And it's pretty common on a national level. And I think it's a mixed bag, probably. Uh, municipalities that aren't getting anything and municipalities that are getting some kind of compensation. Do you know if Northfield, for example, is doing it? I don't know if Northfield is doing it. I was just curious if they were, and you know, they're similar in budget to what, what they were doing and how it worked out and what, you know, I was just curious. I, I can't imagine Barry Town has a huge budget to work with. Well, I don't know where their money came from, but it's and so, I don't know if it's retroactive or since the start of COVID, but since the start of COVID, from this point on, officers are getting covered. Does it make sense for the chief and I to explore sources of this funding and come back yeah. to you folks? Yeah, I mean, yeah. unless we know where we're going to fund it from, there's really nothing we can do to, in any way, shape, or form. Any, however, so I would encourage guys to explore every avenue possible and maybe even yeah i don't even know i don't know yeah maybe even reach out to the other berry town and ask them how they're funding it that, that was that was my thought justin and and my pillar sounds like they're going through the exercise now well if you can do that get it back to us the first of the year first meeting we'll do our best okay Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Thank you for your consideration. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Chief. Uh, Fisher Road Steve. Colbert. Uh, Robert Clark is here. I sent out to you folks a uh, uh, estimate on the uh, Fisher Road repair. That was in that Friday's packet, Robert. You're on the call, but you're on mute. Do you want to bring that up? Or uh, good evening. Can you see me okay, Tom? Yeah. Green space. Uh, so I had sent to Tom uh, basically a 60% cost estimate. We have some really good um, drawings at this point and a good understanding of what's needed for the foundation for this structure. I think there is some room to make some cost savings by shrinking the structure down a little bit, but I wanted to get this to you guys because I, I do think it does a good job of providing an overall estimate of project cost and an order of magnitude of what we're looking at for this project. Um, and certainly as um, 
a good conversation starter. I do have some drawings that I didn't get to Tom in time, and I'll try and share what we have right now. Everyone see this screen? Yes. So the dark shaded area is the new structure basically. And I'll try and highlight uh, the ends here. This is the end of the existing culvert on this side. And this is the end on the outlet side. Uh, for orientation, the north side of the screen uh, is towards Northfield Savings Bank. And, um, and the south side is headed towards up the hill towards the hospital. So this is, we're looking at a structure that's about 120 feet long, just based on the angle. We've been trying to, um, since last Friday, trying to find ways to actually reduce this. And we think we can cut it down to about 105 feet, which will save a little bit on the structure cost, uh, as well as excavation and some of the other items that were in the detailed uh, estimate. Um, in general, uh, there's two kind of options that we were looking at, a, a true circular arch. Um, and we, we put in the existing structure for comparison and then a um, more of a kind of squared off uh, structure. And the difference between the two of those is about $50,000 in material costs. So we think we can, uh, we think we can make the least expensive one work. Um, which is the lower option, the one on the bottom here. Um, and, and we're just waiting on hydraulic approval for that, but it appears to be adequate based on the numbers that we ran. Um, and you can see from this section, uh, we've already shortened the structure length from what it currently is. And, I'm, and we're pretty sure we can pull it back another 10 feet on each side, which would get us down to about 100 feet um, and save a little bit of money uh, as well. So. Uh, this is kind of where we're at here. Um, I know Tom distributed kind of a detailed construction estimate. This is um, based on 60% plans, which included the grading. And I took, took the grading off of that plan that you saw just so that I could um, make it a little bit clearer. But basically we tried to go through and do a really detailed estimate on all the things that were needed for this uh, particular project. And I, I would like to tell you that I think the number here, uh, this $1 million number um, would be conservative. I'd like, I'd like to think that, um, and that we could work towards getting that price down with some of the things that we're talking about right now. Um, but I do think it's a good number to ha start having a conversation about funding. And I'm not sure, I, I wasn't able to attend your last meeting, so I'm not sure what Tom had talked to you about, but what I looked at was a 1% feet alone for, uh, for the project. Um, they require essentially a, a 20% local match to that, which is uh, this right here. Um, and so basically you'd, you'd borrow uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 years, and it has some impact on the debt service payment, um, depending on the loan term. So this, this looked at a 30 year loan and um, and just kind of roughly estimates what the annual tax increase per $100,000 of assessed value would be um, to a property in Berlin. And uh, at the bottom, we kind of highlighted what we're hoping the project schedule will be. We have a pretty good handle on the plans. We're in the process of preparing contract bidding documents and permit applications at this point. And the expectation is that that's all gonna get submitted in January. Theoretically, we could bid the project in February if we needed to. Um, but I, th I think for this, there's really no reason not to wait until later in February or early March. I think it'll help with um, some of the stuff that you guys have going on with town meeting. And um, at this point, it's not a project that you want to try and start construction on in the spring anyway. I think this schedule lines up with what we were talking about to get out there in June and July and no later than August, basically have everything buttoned up. So. Um, so with that, I'll just ask if there's any questions. Robert, can you can you scroll back up and um, keep going? Okay, the, and so that where his previous page, he had the, the million dollars was the, the cost of construction, but there's some also additional, oh, not Sorry. that one. 
Yep. Uh, so you can see the very top of the construction cost is the million dollars that he talked about on the other page. But there's also three other line items in there that, that add up to a project of $1.3 million. So I would, uh, and I would say, you know, just for order of magnitude, you guys had authorized us to spend $40,000 on design and permitting, and I expect to be considerably underneath that. I just carried a standard percentage for technical services and a standard percentage for construction contingency at this point in a, in a project development. So that the 12% and the 15% are just placeholder numbers. And similar to the construction estimate, I would like to think that we could finish under, under both of those. The one thing that's a little uncertain, and I've only had a few conversations with Tom, we're able to do everything um, in an area that takes up less space than what the current structure is occupying. Uh, if you look at this, you know, the end of this culvert is sticking out further than, than there. And these wing walls actually need to be shortened up a little bit. But basically, we're working in the same area. The one concern is whether or not we're going to need an easement from any of the abutting property owners related to this project. We're still working on getting the final VTRANS uh, right-of-way plans added to this. Uh, they have some pretty detailed right-of-way plans, and we picked up some uh, property bins when we did our survey. Um, so we're, we're hoping to add all that information in and just kind of finalize uh, and, and make sure that we're not going to need any permanent easements for the project. <clears throat> and on, on this, um, by shortening up, are you going to narrow up the, uh, the roadway or just the, the culvert itself? Just the culvert itself. So that, that because this one, um, we're going to be able to put head walls on the end of it. And so that's going to give us some more height and will allow us to grade from the roadway shoulder down to the top of the head wall. And so what that allows us to do is actually pull the structure in and narrow it rather than um, rather than have to go all the way out to like the top of the metal like what's there right now. The only reason I, the only reason I asked Robert is um, there was some talk with the town center about having a hiking or a walking path down through there. Um, to get to some of the build out areas. I just want to take and have the, uh, just how, just wondering how shortening up is going to impact that. That's a really good point, uh, Brad. I hadn't uh, discussed that with Tom. I think uh, right now, this is the guardrail right here. Yep. And that, that dark line next to it, it you know, the guardrail is the one with the circles and the dark line next to it is the uh, edge of pavement. And I was thinking we could actually pull this structure back over in here, which would be near the force main. Um, we're going to have to deal with that anyway. This is the old force main from the Chamber of Commerce, so it's not really a, an active line that we're going to need anymore. And that would still leave, just based on this scale, about six or seven feet from the guardrail to the top of the to the top of the structure. And then the question becomes whether or not um, we would want to have the head wall be taller. And, and make that relatively flat across there with like a 2% cross slope. Or if we would wanna just leave the culvert out as far as it is and flatten off, you know, make, basically make a wider shoulder before we taper down to the structure. And um, I don't know if the, the sidewalk right now is on the, up, on the other side of the road. I don't know if there's been any consideration on where the crossing for that would occur. Huh. Well, I mean, if you shortened up the culvert and then allowed uh, allowed a a slight uh, pitch to it, so the water drains off the from the guardrails to the edge of the culvert, you say you'd have six feet there. I think we can make a flat spot of about six feet there. Yeah, that's plenty for a size. Yeah, for a bike path, whatever. Yeah. Okay, that's the only Robert, question I had. Robert, quick question. I noticed on your initial $1 million estimate, which we have the 15% contingency along with the 12% the on there. On the top of yeah. that, it was for a, for 120, uh, 120, I believe it was a 120 foot structure, which we're talking about decreasing potentially, I mean, by a, a really good percentage. 
How does that impact the, you know, you, yeah, we got 120 foot long man in there. If we get it down to 105 feet, how does that impact just overall uh, projection? So that's a good question. I mean, a lot of these are um, fixed costs, right? So site clearing and, and stuff is still going to need to be done for access down to the, to the river level. Uh, so that's not really something we would save on, but I would expect that this item here, structure excavation, would be reduced. Um, uh, preparation for footings could be reduced a little bit, um, just on a percentage basis, similar for uh, the, the pouring of the footings and, and more importantly, the, uh, the delivery and markup of the structure, which is estimated at just under 350000 for that, that structure. Um, so I think there, there could be some, some savings. I haven't gone through the specific reductions because I didn't know exactly what we were going to have, but I think what I was hoping to do was have a conversation with you guys about things like that, that shared use path or that sidewalk and see if there's ways that we can make this smaller or if there's things that I'm missing just because I haven't, um, you know, been involved with you guys at every meeting to see what you've been talking about. I understand. So you, they were talking about doing away with that force main on the, um, on the, that ran over to the. Well, Brent, that that is a that is a privately owned force main. Um, the, the ownership of which needs to be investigated. Uh, I would so I would, as of now, say that that force main would not be removed uh, because it's privately owned, and um, we just need to do further investigation on it. It's um it's inactive right now, and so what I was thinking was that we could just move it in towards the guardrail a little bit, um, but that it would it would still need to stay there. But it's not an active force main with a new pump station online and um, and some of the other infrastructure that we just put in. If if the culvert is failing then that force main there, if we do nothing, that force main is in jeopardy, right? So we actually, um, recently with the sewer project, Du Bois disconnected the Chamber of Commerce's pump station and rerouted yep. the flows from the chamber and the Northfield Savings Bank to the new pump station. We put in a new force main as part of that project. That's this big bold line over here um, on this side of the street. and. When the culvert failed, we actually, we did a change order through that project to put in 60 feet of steel sleeve centered on this existing culvert. And we upgraded, we, we had in our project, but we upgraded to HTPE pipe. It's a, a fused solid pipe all the way through the project area. So we have less, less concern with the force main. Obviously it continues to move. The last time I was in Berlin, which was just last week, uh, there had been more settlement up there. I'm not sure what the last time you guys have been down to that site, but it, it certainly continues to wash out um, and, and sink, if you will. I was just wondering if, if the owner of that, uh, of that of the private force main would take and pitch in some to save it. I think it's Henry and we could have that conversation. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, Brad, that's a nominal cost in it in the whole. Yeah. So, so the next steps from the select board. Um, we we did bake in here the the Vita loan. Uh, so, I think that you that the decision needs to be made is if that's if you want an application to be, to be submitted to VITA. Um, as Robert mentioned, there's a 20% match required there. But there are also other projects that the select board has been discussing, the, the Richardson Road culvert, the, the Lover's Lane deck project, there are other items that, that you mean there was talk of, of doing a- Finding them? Doing them all, yeah. So, um, and, and I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you make that decision to, tonight, but it's a decision that you as a select board need to have. And it, it, and it could be as part of that next budget meeting as well. Oh, 
why don't I get the loan documents application and just start looking at it? And, and yeah. Yeah, because I mean, no matter what, we're going to have taken fund it somehow. Can't have that road, especially if it's if it's still washing out. It, it had probably settled in a, a couple of sinkholes the other day um, that were four to six feet in diameter and it had dropped another eight inches in those sinkholes. Um, and that's just been in the last two weeks. So um, I know that it's certainly, I, I, I wouldn't feel safe kind of walking around there putting heavy equipment on there in that area until it gets kind of excavated and exposed and some of that weight taken off of it because it's certainly whatever caused it to collapse it's it's progressing pretty quickly at this point so <coughs> okay anything more for robert i don't have anything thank you thank you robert yeah, thank well, you robert we'll We'll, we'll work towards this schedule here and I'll, I'll come back to Tom when we're ready to submit permit applications and, and prepare to go out to bid for this. Uh, okay. One thing one thing to keep in mind that the timing of it's pretty good. I've heard from contractors that there's not a whole lot of work coming out um, right now. Uh, and uh, at least from our firm, we don't expect to see a significant amount coming out in the next two months anyway. So uh, it could be good timing to get it out to bid and get some competitive prices. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thanks, have a good night. Thank, thank you, Robert. Robert. Okay, planning commission draft, zoning regulations and official map and capital budget. Yeah, so the planning commission met last Wednesday. They had their uh, public hearing on uh, two of the items here, the draft zoning regulations and uh, the official map for the town. And um, uh, they have made the, the respective changes that came out of those, uh, that public hearing. And uh, you folks received Friday, the recommendations from the, from the, from the planning commission on those two items and, and the, uh, the, the capital uh, budget uh, program for the town center. I, uh, Randy, you still, Randy, you're still on the uh, call. You want to share your screen and pull up those items, and we could briefly talk with the select board about them. At at the end of the day, the, the select board needs to hold their own public hearings on this, um, and and we're assuming that that would occur on. Um, January uh, the 18th as part of uh, your regular scheduled meeting. Sorry, Tom, I don't have the files open. I didn't realize you okay. wanted to um, do that, but um, maybe it would be good to know if any of the select board members have um, specific questions um, on those documents or um, want some sort of a uh, presentation at their public hearing that took, um, and then I'll be looking for the documents. Yes, we'll would plan on on doing a, that presentation on behalf of the select board. Um, what what came out of uh, the the meeting on the sixteenth with, and I sent you folks all the minutes from that. Um, uh, Central Vermont Medical Center had had um, some concerns on zoning uh, regulations and. Uh, we believe all of them have been addressed to their satisfaction, and I think they're 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 pretty um, pleased with the efforts of the of the planning commission. Um, uh, building height was concerned with with them, uh, and it was concerned with our first responders as well. And, and we seem to have come to a, a agreement on on all those parties on on building height uh, there. Um, so the um, official map that was sent out that had uh, very few comments on it, uh, just more of a ex explaining what some of the items listed on there. There's actually quite a few uh, parcels of property that the town owns 
that we listed them as facilities and um, it was a little confusing. And so that's gonna be, re it has been relabeled as um, parcels slash facilities on, on the map. <laughs> okay, thank you. Go ahead, Brandy. You able to share? Yeah, should be it. There you go. This is the official map that I was just discussing. And the only um, change of any substance to this from the draft that um, you saw previously was the addition of the water and wastewater, um, the existing water and wastewater infrastructure to the map. We have finally managed to get that converted over from the engineers CAD drawings to, to the GIS mapping and put that on the map. Um, other than that, as Tom said, there were some slight changes to labeling and things like that, but that was the only addition that's uh, from the draft we've seen before on content. Randy, maybe you could pull up the uh, capital improvement uh, a plan that's relatively new to the select board. They've seen drafts of it, but we've, we've uh, put some final numbers to it now. I don't know if this is going to switch over or not here. I think I might have to switch it manually. Okay, so this is the capital improvement um, program document. There are um, eight projects identified in here um, that relate to the Berlin Town Center. Um, you had seen seven of these previously. Um, as a result of the comments we got from the, the preliminary state agency review, um, VTrans wanted to see something in here about the, the Route 62 intersections. So we have added an eighth um, project line in here that um, is for some um, a transportation planning study that would look at those intersections uh, at some point after you've done uh, more of the transportation planning and design work and permitting for um, the, the sidewalk and um, pathway type of infrastructure inside the, the town center, then you could look at connecting that infrastructure across Route 62. So we did add that um, there based on those recommendations. Um, <clears throat> essentially, there's um, these projects are still fairly conceptual. And so we don't have a lot of hard um, numbers to put to them. Um, the municipal building project, the street project, the pathway project are all things that need um, sort of a next step planning study. So you can get some um, better idea of cost estimates and um, potential funding op options and sort of the final design and permitting requirements and things like that, which you could then put together a much more um, detailed plan in terms of what amount of money would need to be spent by what, uh, in what year and what the funding um, options would be. On the- Excuse me, Brandy, this, excuse me, Brandy, excuse me, Brandy. So to that end, uh, you may recall, uh, uh, we submitted, the Planning Commission submitted uh, uh, grant applications for number one there, the municipal building, and number three there, the town center path. Uh, the grant application we just found for number one, the municipal building, uh, was denied. Uh, we found that out last week. So uh, we will seek a, 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 a similar grant for that project in the next grant cycle. Um, we should have our designation by then. Once we have our designation, we believe that's going to move us up on the list of, of uh, viable projects for that uh, for that demonstration grant. So, um, but the the town center path is uh, we still have not heard from VTrans if 
um, if they're gonna fund that grant uh, this coming year or not. And one of the other things that Tom and I have done to the capital improvement program here since um, you've last seen it is to go back and to try to more accurately capture the um, expenditures that you've already made to the water and sewer projects uh, serving the Berlin Town Center. Um, we think this helps strengthen the uh, new town center application and helps show uh, the town's level of commitment um, based on your already, the monies you've already um, committed and, and spent. So the, that's, you're seeing that in the prior, the first column in the, um, in the, in the table. Um, and, and those were really number six and number seven there. Yeah, yeah. And then um, <clears throat> we've also broken it out. This is the second page of the improvement program looking at where your funding would come from. And this is something that as you look at this capital improvement plan every year and update it as you do your normal budget cycle, um, you'd be able to add more detail going forward um, in, in future years as you get a better sense of um, what your funding sources um, would be and, and those actual project costs. And as you recall, we're, we're, um, once we receive designation, we uh, begin uh, looking at the TIF district. And really, we, we really see that as the uh, potential source of a lot of the funding for this project. And this is also, uh, you know, a tool for tracking your, your debt service commitments. Um, so you can see that this, this keeps track of how much of these um, fund, funds are going to project costs and how much is going to debt service uh, as you go forward. Okay. Um, Randy, can you enlarge this screen a little bit? Uh, probably just a bit. Um, I can show individual pages for projects. It's a little bit hard to get it so that it um, not cut off here on the screen, but so we've still got page two up. That helped a little bit. So the, um, the capital, all three of these items need um, select board hearings and adoption. Um, that is uh, hopefully, I think the idea, Tom, is that these would all be done in one session, but you'll need to do hearings on each of the three items separately. Yeah, it's, ten it's, it's tentatively scheduled for uh, January 18th. Which is a regular scheduled select board meeting. You probably read in the paper that the um, the Paint Curve Bike Norwich Wastewater Project uh, had a funding of two point seven five percent. USDA is going to lower that uh, to 1.75%, which saves roughly uh, $12,000 a year over that 30 year uh, note. Um, so that's a, that's a big savings that uh, is reflected here in this capital budget. And this is that, this is the, the sixth well, it's actually probably the seventh page in, it's project six. Um, and that's the wastewater um, project item. And the water and wastewater paid by user fees. Yeah, which is what is showing here in that, that enterprise funds uh, line going through.
So I think the only other thing that I would um, note that um, to supplement what you said, Tom, about the zoning um, uh, revisions is that we have, and I think you sent along to the um, select board the comments and the responses. So you can see the comments that the state has made on um, the preliminary application and some of their um, recommendations and requests and um, what the Planning Commission uh, decided to do in response to those. So some of you can see where some of those changes are coming from um, and as well as the um, comments from CVMC and um, some other public comments that we had as well. Yeah, that was part of the uh, draft Planning Commission minutes that I sent out to you folks. I think it was Thursday or Friday. So CMVC is on board now. They they really have been for for the for the the, the time. There were some uh, questions that they had on um, how our streets would impact their ability to to develop their campus. And uh, we we believe that we have ironed all those out, Brad. Okay. That's I, good news. I did invite them to attend here tonight. Um, I don't see them on the call, but so if they would have had concerns, I think they would have been here. Yeah. So it's moving forward slowly. We're still hoping to get in front of the downtown board with our application in, in February. So it's, it, it may, made... <laughs> what, what was that, Brandy? We're on schedule. Yeah, we're on schedule. Yeah, so. Well, sitting, in this, sitting in this chair, it hasn't been slow. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. Any more questions for Brandy? Thank you, Brandy. So with that said, is, is it the select board's uh, desire to advertise this public hearing for January 18th at 7 p.m.? Sure. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Promissory note approval, Tom? Yeah, so the, uh, you may know that the water division has, currently has two promissory notes with the select board uh, for projects um, that they have, have undertaken. And I'm just pulling up my documents now, Brad. And um, the uh, public support board would, uh, would like the, um, the wastewater division to to close out the select board held promissory notes with the water division and and hold uh, that note uh, between divisions of the public's work board. It, uh, what it what it has what they believe does it it puts all that under one roof, and what it does it potentially um, frees up for the select board's use a hundred and uh, near, nearly uh, $142,000. Um, and I, I, they were very cognizant of your Fisher Road culvert issues. And um, so they thought that this may be a way to help the select board out is to, to um, close out uh, the promissory note with that the two of them that you folks hold. Um, uh, give back to the general fund $141,578 and assume that promissory note uh, between the water division. Okay, hear a motion on this. I'm sorry, I had to. Is that Justin? I had to step away for a moment. I apologize. Otherwise, I may be willing to make the motion. Um, 
well, the water department and the sewer department want to give us give us back our hundred forty forty one point five thousand. Yeah, that sounds good. Where's the money going? What? Where is that money going to? Our does that go into our fund balance or that general that... fund? The what? Into the general fund. So moved. Here a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Brad, you have a document there that that uh, I'll need you to sign, and I'll have to witness it at the end of the end of the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Do we need? Uh, we don't need to give you any authority to sign on behalf of the board or anything, do we? Uh. I I don't think so, but I wouldn't hurt. I don't think, I don't think we do on this one. What's that, John? We don't think we do on this one with with them just paying off the promissory note because we yeah. we already approved it. Brad's just signing as the chair. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So uh let's see here. Uh, Conservation Commission. So uh, you may recall, I, I see Phil's on the in, uh, in the call. So uh, 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 the Conservation Commission and VAST have um, come up with a. Uh, uh, you folks uh, wanted to have a joint public hearing. Uh, there's they have tentatively scheduled that for January twentieth at six p.m. Uh, they have uh, the 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 agenda would be that that the conservation commission would give a, a an overview of of the town lands, the existing easements and such. After that, uh, the uh, vast folks would uh, give a presentation on their application to the to the town for use of town lands, and then um, then uh, we. The joint committees, uh, joint um, organizations, would open it up for public comment, and uh, so we we proceed through public comment um, on the application until there was really no further comment, and then my my, my thought would be then that the the, uh, uh, the conservation commission and the select board go into uh, an executive session uh, with respect to contract negotiations to uh, to um, uh, just w weigh the merits of, of that uh, of that contract with vast and come out of that meeting uh, with a decision so I don't see where that would warrant an executive session there is nothing there that that, that it, it's not a true contract where we'd have a where someone would be disadvantaged in the conversation. I then we just don't then know we how do. they would do it. Then it's in open session. Then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bill, uh, can you hear me, Tom? Yes. I guess the other the other oh. thing we wanted to add in that uh, we have uh, composed a survey we thought might be useful. We shared with. Tom and Brad, I don't know if it's been shared with other members, and we would like to get that into the community for responses before January 20th. We're hoping possibly to post it. Uh, there could be paper, but in this day and age of COVID, I think everybody's probably going to want to do remote or you know online emailing, and uh, we could possibly post it in a few places to get some more responses, just to make sure we're covering all the bases. What did you, Brad? Did you get the a chance to look at that? I haven't seen it. I had, okay. Um, Tom, did you get it? I reviewed it, yeah, and I uh, I spoke to um, folks uh, uh, Phil about it. I, I don't. I think it it just helps move the the vast application along. I'll send it out to everybody. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't, yeah, that would have been good. I don't know why when we get these things, why we don't send them out almost 
immediately to the rest of the board. Is there a reason we don't do that? Uh, I haven't been instructed to do that. And I just always thought it would be the administrator and the chair. I don't know if everyone. Yeah, well, no, Phil, let me clarify. I was, it's definitely not the chair, but it, it would be like a, a policy. So in this situation, it would be the administrator. So I was just curious. Um, I mean, I know why you maybe wouldn't put five people on it or a quorum on the, on it, but if there is information that's important to share, Phil, the, the best thing to do is to get it out to everybody as soon as possible. So if you did, did put people on it, that would be great. Um, we're not making a decision so you can absolutely, and we're not going to discuss it. So you could absolutely share information that way. So yeah. if you could just send any future correspondence to the entire select board at the same time, it would help expedite the process. I'd appreciate it. Hey, Phil. Sure. Hey, Phil, yep. um, are, are you asking for names and addresses on the survey? Yeah. Okay. I, I was just wondering how we were going to. Tell you what, I'll, I'll get that out to you later tonight. And then, you know, I mean, we've got, we've got four weeks and we were thinking of front porch forum, any other input from you guys on how we could yep. share this would be great. Uh, Corinne said she could put it on. I think we can get it on the town website. That would be me, Phil. So send it to me and I can get it on the website. Oh, okay. I'm going to send it out to everyone right now. All right. Thanks. Yeah. I think probably front porch forum will be the place that catches the most vis visibility. So that'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the only other uh, follow up to this whole process is we did meet with uh, a gentleman from the state and I went up with Josh and we looked at the bridge and so we've got more information on that, which is, is good to have under the belt as far as the structure and the rebuilding the bridge. I okay. think the one, the one concern, I mean, it's not a concern. One thing we'll have to address is if in fact, unlike other situations with VAST, that their work and energy and other than the $3,000 in material that we're providing, uh, Josh mentioned or via Dave Rulo that uh, this, this bridge would then be uh, owned by the town. Right. And no matter what happens in the future, or any agreements with VAST, the, uh, the materials would stay on site and the bridge would be ours. Now, I don't know if that needs to be formalized in an agreement or any sort of written agreement. So, because that may be a little bit outside the bounds of other ways that VAST improves and builds bridges. Bill, I, I, I talked to uh, David uh, about this. And he, he's okay. I, I'll ask him for a letter to that effect. Okay. A couple other thoughts that I have in terms of the survey is the news to knows that Corinne does and also perhaps in the Times Argus in the world with a link letting people know that they could go to the town website and complete the survey there as well. That's a good idea, Flo. I'll make sure we do that. Why don't you everyone take a look at it? Any additions or any suggestions? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you'll be able to edit on that, but you can send them along and we can adjust. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that'd be great. Get this moving. I know it's Christmas week, but you know, people are home a lot, so they're going to be looking. Everybody's home searching. Absolutely. The, Thank you, Phil. Yeah. I guess the one other quick thing, just that, uh, we are going to not open the, uh, the larger skating rink or the warming hut this winter because of COVID restrictions, but we will have the, uh, the other skating rink open, but we want to encourage people to mask and the lights will be available. And I think we're going to try to get a porta potty up there, but there won't be any warming hut. Uh, and we want to make sure that people are adhering to things. So we'll have proper signage on all that. It's kind of not, what the Conservation Commission always focuses on, but as you know, because we don't have a recreation committee, that uh, Tom Willard's really taken the bull by the horns on this for the last 10 or 20 years. So we'll continue to try to keep that open. Tom did flood it. And, uh, but I did want to mention with uh, Central Vermont, you know, the other ice uh, facilities being closed down, we thought at least we could have a small pond up there for, for families as long as you know they're going to have to adhere to some distancing and we're encouraging everyone to wear masks of course hey, hey phil you mentioned too for the orca listening audience uh could you just give the locations of those so people 
so people uh, that are listening listening in uh, know where those are? Yeah, it's up by the municipal building. Is that the one that's closed, or is that the one that's going to Oh, excuse me. There's two up there. Oh, okay. There, there was a hockey rink that won't be open, but there is a small skating pond that will be flooded and will be open. Okay. It's open now. Yeah, it's yeah. open. Yeah. I didn't realize there was two in that same location. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So before before we move on off this topic, I just uh, so I will plan on advertising this January twentieth hearing this week. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And Tom, I appreciate you uh, volunteering to moderate it. No problem. Thank All you, right. Philip. All right. Thank you. Have a good uh, evening. The second piece for the uh, conservation committee, uh, Justin, you had some thoughts on uh, on the uh, illegal tapping in okay uh berlin berlin forest is now an appropriate time to talk about those or no or are we in a good spot with the letter going to the lawyer right now tom well the, i sent out to you i think yesterday um uh rob helpert's letter to to the howards uh i we, i can we okay. can talk about that if you want but it's i think it's it speaks for itself and um you will well, get back gonna, to us. What I, I think Quinn and John and I had briefly had a conversation about uh, one of my friends, the maple syrup producer, and we went over, you know, just the actual numbers um, of how many pounds per tap you should expect to get, you know, how, obviously how many pounds per gallon, um, and then what the barrel rate is for a product, you know, finished product. Um, and so I was going to send an email out explaining all of the details. And, and I saw that there was a dollar figure on the, the, the letter you sent out today, Tom. So I didn't, I didn't take the time to do that. I need to actually sit down and do that. I just wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page for the, the, the finished product pricing. Um, so that, cause I feel as though if there are damages there that we're entitled to collect or that we should collect, we should, I mean, we should go do that. My other question would be, um, with insurance carriers, I don't know if we have any sort of loss coverage um, inside our municipal policies, but if we have losses due to damages that are outside of our control, I mean, it may make sense for us to, to, to put our property and casualty agent on point, um, because if we have potential losses there that we can claim against our insurance, our insurance company would then bifurcate against their insurance company, which could also help us collect that money back. We might get it sooner if we use our insurance company and also to help cover our potential legal costs. Um, so I think that's something we definitely need to look at for the town. I don't know if you've thought of that or if that makes sense, but. Makes sense, I'll, I'll call them tomorrow. Yeah. So I, I would think, so I, I think Phil and Tom, you can see kind of where Justin was thinking. I think any uh, further conversation because of the legal situation, we should take it up in executive session if we're going to go into into much more depth. Uh, but at least, you know, everyone understands kind of where we are and, you know, we're serious about uh, collecting on the damages up there on the hill. I concur. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Diane? Nope, I don't have anything. Okay. We're at the uh, town uh, 755 there, Brad. Yep, uh, town clerk, uh, the town meeting for 2021. Uh, town clerk is recommending to have it Australian ballot. I make and a motion to make uh, the 2021 town meeting all by Australian ballot this year due to COVID. I second the motion. Okay. Um, the only thing I had on that was how are we going to, or how, how do they uh, envision um, being able to get the like, uh, being able to get um, a local options tax being discussed in the town meeting. Have you heard, John? 
Um, I'm not aware of any other town that's uh, that's doing that this year or that it's on the ballot for this year. I could just be missing it. Um, well, it's it's not so much just the lo local options tax. I'm just saying any any controversial item that may be coming before the town. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate uh, given the COVID situation. Uh, what other towns are, I think are are starting to do or what they're uh, encouraging uh, in this. You know, there's some equity issue here, uh, but a lot of towns are taking to front porch forum, um, so they can have that live community discussion and weigh the the ins and outs of the different um, uh, ballot items uh, you know, as I said, there is a equity issue there of not everyone uh, potentially has internet or is able to get a uh, front porch forum, but it does cover a large majority. And I think, um, you know, may maybe we have, um, maybe we have an email address that we can, you know, have public comment to or, or do a, you know, some kind of public comment some other way. Uh, but, you know, given the guidance right now, we're not going to be able to meet. This it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Well, what I, I was would, thinking, I would one of, I wanted to add to that. I would think one of the other things that we might want to be proactive on, John, is to um, maybe do some some sort of presentations and have links set up in advance. Um, because we know there, Brad, like you, you said the local options tax and, you know, for an example, well, if that's something that we're going to discuss um, that, or a big item like that, then we also have to have a, a reasonable presentation to get the information out there, yeah. which I think will really, really help make it put a lot of people's minds at ease. So well, I don't know how we're going to develop a plan to do that, but I don't, maybe well, you'll get yeah, my whole thing was that we're starting to see what that bridge is going to cost there on Fisher Road, what, $1.3 million. And with that, you're going to be able to take in and uh, show people what it's going to do to their tax rate, whereas you, then you can take in and make the argument that a local options tax would save them X number of dollars or even uh, reduce their taxes some. But uh, at least that was the strategy I was looking at. Right. So who in our crew of volunteers or paid positions would make a presentation that would do something and give that explanation? Where would well, we go for that? The, the first thing we got to do is we got the salt box to do it. And that was town meeting. Yeah, but if you send it out electronically, that's how the major, uh, majority of people aren't getting their information at town meeting. I think there's a majority that do, or, or a portion that do. But yeah. the, I believe that the majority of taxpayers are gathering most of their information prior to town meeting in, in venues like Front Porch Forum. So if we have something prepared in advance that gives people the information that they need to make a decision, that's how we would do it. That that that's where most of their that's where that's where most people get their information now i i've suggested to the board in the past to to really retain some professional uh folks to maybe put the, together a, a youtube uh discussion on this matter um and and it's and it's that way it could be distributed widely um i i don't think anybody in the town uh, has that wherewithal. I don't know if there's any volunteers that have that wherewithal. I, I really think that we, a, 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 a relatively inexpensive, pro professionally developed um, uh, case for this would 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 uh, be very fruitful. Well, yeah. even you know, one of the other things we could do if we got right on top of it would be to put out on front porch forum, put out all the other places the the questions people have. In, in reference to these, you know, you can just plant some seeds so that when you do do a YouTube, Tom, I completely agree with that idea, um, that you can address some of these specific questions maybe that people have um, other than just anticipating or other than just having sort of a one-sided conversation. Do you have a resource for that sort of production or, and if so, the other piece to this is who in, who in our town is going to field those questions or who 
would we have one of our engineers or one of our other advisors field the questions and be a part of the YouTube video? You know, I, that's what I don't know. I'm just trying to get a picture of it. Uh, I, I would uh, to be honest with you. I'd probably talk to Brandy. She has her pulse on a lot of the, the planning folks who have done this kind of work. Um, and I, and I maybe take her lead on that and, and get some cost estimates and, uh, and for, a, for, a, for your guys' consideration. And do you think that Brandy would be able to cover, I mean, would obviously have multiple videos covering other topics, but what, what sort of spectrum? I mean, I know Brad just tied in this bridge project as a piece, but I mean, the bridge project alone is a topic people would probably want to know about. So, I mean, you can't really just jumble it all into one. How do you think we would go about covering all of the, the, the topics that we're gonna need to cover for town meeting? Uh, <laughs> well, the trouble is Justin, right now we're, 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 uh, we're going where no man has gone before. I don't it think is. it's that complicated, though. I think we just need to break the system down. We just need to break it down into each individual silo of people's expertise. And speaking of expertise, a person that came to my mind is Jeremy Hansen. I think he would be an invaluable resource if he well, were he pushed, willing to help us in this regard. I think John Quinn could probably add up a bunch of it, too, myself. But. Not really well, an IT guy. Yeah. <laughs> He, uh, uh, Jeremy, he he was the one that was pushing for it uh, probably five six years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Um, he did a lot of he did a lot of legwork on it. I'm a huge proponent for it. I think it will be very beneficial for the town and for residents. And it's just a matter of pulling the data together and get it getting it communicated in an informative way and being able to answer folks' questions as we move forward with the discussions. Yeah. Let, okay. let, me, let me reach, let me reach out to some folks and I'll-, I'll... Even if it's, even if it's in, in my opinion, even if it's not like a, a YouTube, but you know, a simple message, you know, saying, you know, here's a frequently asked questions that we can post in different places. Please go to the website, here they are or at the same time that we list out all of the ballot items, have an explanation of what they are over here with you know, options to, yeah. to send feedback. I mean, it's not gonna be a perfect year by any means, but that's what, you know, people have the right to vote up, up or down. And you know, historically, at least um, from what I saw last year and in Northfield in my years there, I love town meeting, but you have less than 5% that go. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Okay, well, wait, Brad, you guys have you guys have a motion here. Yeah, I know. I was just getting to it, Tom. But but <laughs> but, I I just want to call your attention to Rosemary's note. She she also says that the board vote not to hold the physical or virtual town meeting on February twenty seventh, two thousand and twenty one, as uh, the the date was voted on last March. So your, your motion now is just to hold these things by Australian ballot. I, I think you need to add to it that you're gonna cancel that February 27th, 2021. Uh, I guess it was pre-town meeting. I guess it was the pre-town meeting on Saturday. I would, I would amend my motion to uh, cancel the pre-town meeting on February 27th, you said, Tom? Yes. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, okay, Tom, grand list. Errors no, no, Brad, Brad, Brad. So Rosemary had a, a second um, um, item there that she's, she's saying that articles requesting funded, funding would be treated as they always have been. If an organization received money last year and they are not increasing their request, they only need a letter requesting to be on the ballot. If an organization did not receive funding last year, then they would still need uh, the normal petition signed by 5% of the legal voters of Berlin. 
Yeah, she, she's she's asking the select board to um, clearly delineate that. that. Correct. Reaffirm that. Yes. Uh, motion for that one. So yeah. moved. Yeah. You're a second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank uh, you. Yeah, grand list errors and omissions. Hold on, Brad. Brad. <laughs> she she also she also requested the board authorized the expenditure of funds for postcards to be printed and then mailed by the town clerk to all unchallenged voters on the Berlin checklist. The postcard would be much the same as the two part one the state mailed back in the middle of 2020. The, the postcard would be informational. It would let every voter know that there would not be an actual meeting and that all articles would appear on the ballot as well as those wishing to run for office in March be aware of the different requirements. Absentee ballot form, a portion of postcard would be returned as an absentee request for town meeting as well as any other elections there might be in 2021. She's asking for the similar postcard systems that went out um, or she wants just absentee ballots. She wants postcards telling folks that there's going to be no meeting and that if you want an absentee ballot, there's a, she said she, there's a, a part of the postcard that, re, that they would return. Return. Yeah. Okay. So, so like a trial, do we have any idea how much that would cost? I, I asked her that, Justin, and I, she did not get back to me. So I, I don't know. Does she have it in her budget? I doubt it. Um, well, actually, what she what she did with me is she had asked me um, how much she had in, in the budget, how much she had spent, and she did have a couple thousand dollars left that has not been spent. And part of that being that we didn't have the absentee ballots that we had to mail out because it was all done for us in November. I don't know if this is worth anything, but I know the fire department wanted. We can't hear you, Justin. Sorry, I don't know if this is of any value to the town at all, but I know the fire department wanted to mail some information out as well um, in reference to the uh, potential study they're doing to, to see whether it would be beneficial to be a municipal department. I don't know if I could get them to split the cost or how that would work, but I mean, there's another budget there to potentially get money from. Great idea. I don't know how that would work. So, so it sounds to me you guys don't mind if she does it unless she has the money in her budget. Well, if she has the money in her budget, she should go for it. Well, I mean, I'm not going to, I don't think we need to put it out to a motion. We all can concur with this, can't we? Absolutely. It's, budget. it's a, it, it's, it's, it falls under her authority as, as the yeah. town clerk as part of her duties to, uh, the voting system or the uh, it falls under that that piece of statutory requirement so she has the authority to do it from my standpoint well i trust that she'll do a good job if the money's in the budget i see no reason not to move forward with that okay tom just tell her we All right. the select board concurs okay thank you Now errors and omissions. List? Yes. <laughs> uh, grand list errors and omissions. I what what, you, the, what are we up to now? I sent you in advance a list from um, the assessors. The, the dollar amount by my calculation is that uh, the, there is would be a reduction of about $8,600 in revenue. In the by, grand list? Correct, by these errors and omissions. Diane? 
Yeah, some of them have to do with the personal property tax. I would send the forms out to people and if they don't respond, then I, I charge them. And then some of these companies, they just went under, especially during COVID. I think that's probably the majority of them. I think there might be a mobile home in there too that was t- was torn down and taken away and they didn't know about it. But I haven't seen the list, so I'm not absolutely certain what she has on it. Can you share that list with her, Tom, by any chance? Or share that? I can, yeah. I'm kind of, did I miss the notice for the Board of Civil Authority and the, for that? Mm-hmm. Or is this just the listers coming before the board? This is the listers yeah, come- the, yeah, they come in December because they have yeah. to file their final 411 report. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I had had a question just on the same, to- well, it's on the same topic with the listers, but um, about how we had a previous errors and emissions claim on there. And I, I don't think my question ever got answered. So when it's appropriate, I'd like to discuss that. Just wanted to put everybody on board. So they're looking for, uh, for the board to accept their uh, errors and emissions? Yes. Yes, you said it's eighty six hundred. That's by calculation of what it is, Brad. You know, I, I use the higher of the of the tax rates. And yeah, I think a good bit of this would fall under the lower end of it, but I use the higher number. We got you. So probably a motion to allow for errors and emissions up to eighty six hundred. I make the motion to allow the errors and emissions up to $8,600 on the grand list. Is there a second? Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Use the town-owned Coos property trail. Oh, Richard God, I Riendo. Got, yeah, I got to. I sent that to you guys in advance. I got to pull up my. Uh, you may recall a couple of meetings ago, uh, Ms. Riendo uh, wanted to use a, a, a portion of a town-owned property on uh, Kuos Trail for uh, logging of uh, of a, a contiguous piece of property down there. The board asked for a uh, certificate of insurance naming the town as an additional short and he included that and a uh, $2,000 performance bond and he has uh, submitted to the town treasurer that $2,000. So I think he is he is satisfied the select board's um, uh, desires with respect to this. Yeah, the only, only thing we 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 don't have is a official document from you know that that the, the applicant would sign and the town would sign. Um, it's something we got to work on, but it's something we don't have right now. Well, um, have a can I hear a motion uh, contingent on the uh, the uh, the document? That way there when the document's done or would the board care to uh, review it? I don't need to review it. So moved. A second. Second. Any further comment? All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Um, minutes of November 10th. Those minutes were edited by a Conservation Commission. So you guys have, what I've sent you was the uh, uh, 
the edited minutes with their comments to it. Okay. A motion on those? Make motion to approve the minutes of November 10th. As amended, John. As amended. Here a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay, motion carries. Minutes of November 16th. I make the motion to approve the minutes of November 16th, 2020. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And uh, let's see here. Approval licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Your motion. Who's got the paper? I would, but I don't have it in front of me. Can I hear a motion to uh, approve payroll warrant 21-12 for payroll from November 22nd, 2020 to December 5th, 2020, paid on December 9th, 2020, in the amount of $48,924.99. Also payroll warrant 21-G13 with checks 207 Four seven to check two zero seven nine three in the amount of four hundred and thirty eight thousand seven hundred and forty nine dollars and one cent. November general journal entries and tax admin adjustments. The November budget status report, trial balance, and delinquent tax report. So moved. So moved. <laughs> yeah. Second. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> Thank you. There's about 18 documents here that I'm trying to find the right one here. Yeah, I think you uh, just yeah. outsource that. Yeah, um, let's see here. So uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, round table. John? Justin? Yeah, oh. quickly. Hold oh. on, Justin. Hold on, hold on. Put yourself back on mute for a minute. <laughs> um, I, my, my question was more around process around the budget. When do we need to have a finalized budget by? It was in January. I, I know it's like the beginning of January. I can't tell no, you exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's toward the end of January. We got end? one we can, one more uh, select board meeting before we have to have it done. I want to say it's what, January sometime around the 21st, 22nd. You got to print the booklets, right? Yeah. How long does that, and then they have to be out 30 days ahead of time. Yeah. The, uh, the trouble I'm seeing this year is um, how many booklets do we print or do we take and put it on, uh, put it on uh, electronic? In in if North, we do it electronically, we're not going to have a whole lot of cost. In, in Northfield, we did it as a budget saving exercise one year, Brad, exactly what you're talking about. We ordered uh, quite a few the first year uh, and did it online and said, basically, you know, if you want a copy, come to the town office and pick one up. Yeah. You want to read it online, here it is. And then we scaled back the number of copies that we made each year until we found the right balance. What was the balance? I'm just curious. I don't remember. You know, we usually take and print about 600 and have what? Five or 500, six cases? 550 <laughs> left. Right. Uh, well, I think the only ones that they get it on the select board and some of the uh, some of the diehards. Oh. So. I I would think if we put it online and and had 200 copies, we would we'd be doing pretty well. Yeah, I do too. I. Especially this year, if we're not going to be having a physical town meeting, because a lot agree. of people, 
you know, a lot of people came and picked them up then. Okay. Anything else, John? Um, no, I'm good. Justin? Thanks, Justin. Thanks. Thanks, John, for giving me my floor back. Um, no, Mike, I had a quick question. It was following up with the successors that having this news and mentions reminded me of an issue. Justin, we, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So this errors and emissions deal with the, the assessors reminded me of a question I had a, a few years back on a piece of property. Um, and that was where the, the previous owner retained the development rights. So we reduced the tax rate or the, ta the assessed value of the property because the current owner has no uh, development rights. So they, they lowered the property by like 50 or $80,000 and had to put in an ENO claim. Uh, but I don't, the, the values based, I mean, the property is still worth what the property is worth. So I just wanted to get an explanation of that. Tom, this might be right up your wheelhouse. I don't know if you were familiar with what happened. I, I heard about it, but I'm just, I, I can't I speak I intelligently to it. I, but it, well, it just makes no sense that I would like to have them explain that to us at some point because I mean, shit, I, or shoot, <laughs> I could, if I sold my property and, but I maintained all the development rights, it sounds like a great way to defraud the town of its tax dollars. Uh, um, I, I agree with you. Because well, the property is worth what it's worth today. It's, and that's what we're taxing it on, not what it's potentially worth in the future. And I really want them to come back in and explain that. And I don't know how to make them do it. Well, it, it's no different than, than, um, a land trust buying up your development rights and then uh, it reduces your taxes. It's very different. You get funding from the state. Because, but at the same time, the, I think that the, that the um, land trust also pays some taxes there to the town. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not positive. They they do, but the land trust is a completely different deal than private parties. So I just would like to have them come in and explain. You and I could debate it all day long, but I'd like to ask them to come into one of our meetings and explain that, or give us a letter explaining how that actually works from their standpoint when it's private. I mean, do we want taxpayers selling properties and maintaining development rights? And then, I mean, we could we could easily drop our tax revenue in half if everyone in town wanted yeah. to do that. So I don't think it's setting a very good precedence and I'd like to know how that works and why that is. Why don't we have them come to this budget meeting, beginning of the budget meeting, and we probably need to set a date for your next budget meeting. Yeah. That'd be phenomenal. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Hello? I don't have anything tonight, but thank you. Okay, any executive session? Tom? No, no, but I round table. Do you guys want to set a date for your next budget meeting now? Let's see here. So our first meeting's on the fourth. It is, yes. The week before that. Um Diane, you still have a phone here? Yep, I'm okay. still here. What time are you available, Diane? Anytime. Uh, how about Wednesday, December 30th? Mm -hmm. As good a day yeah. as any. Yeah. John, Flo. I should, I, should, I should be able to make that work. Yeah, you want to make it work for 6 o'clock or what time? That works for me that night at 6 o'clock. Try. Yeah. Get it done with.
I don't have anything else, Mr. Chair. A motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. You all speak up so well when that motion comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Thank happy you. happy holidays. Good night. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Yeah.